welcome to Digital Signal Processing Online Lecture Series. Myself Prima Rawat from LG Institute of Engineering Technology. Today's topic is Inverse Z Transform from the unit Z Transform and its applications to analysis of LTI system. In previous session, we have seen the methods of finding Inverse Z Transform. There are two methods, partial fraction method and power series method. In last session, we have seen the partial fraction expansion method. In today's session, we are going to see the power series method. So let's start. So in power series method, there are two cases according to which we are going to solve the example. So the first case over here is causal sequence case. That means for modes are greater than A, where A is the constant value. So in case of causal sequence, you have to carry out the long division method without changing the order of polynomial which means it should start with the most positive term on the left hand side. That means the power series method which is also called as long division method or direct division method. There will be two cases. In first one the causal sequence case you will have to perform this by the taking data as it is that means with the most positive term on the left hand side. And the second case that means uh, anti-causal sequence. So for that, if it is more than less than A, you have to carry out the long division method by changing its order. That means changing the order of polynomial, which means it should start with most negative term on the left hand side. That means for if this is the causal sequence case, you will have the maximum power of the term on the left hand side. And in case of anti-causal sequence, for which ROC condition will be given to you, you have to take the most negative term on the left hand side. So these two cases will be more clear to you when we will perform the examples. So let's start with the first case that means the causal sequence case. So let us consider the first causal sequence case that means for which mode z is greater than a. Right? So let us consider the data for which you have to find the Z transform if X of Z given to you is Z upon Z minus 1 where mod Z is greater than 1. That means over here as you can see the case given to you is causal 1 that means for greater than A where A is 1. So we will take this term as it is having the maximum power on the left hand side. That means as you can see this indicates Z raised to 1 and this indicates Z raised to 0. So we will take this as it is with most positive term on the left hand side and now we will do the division for this. So let us start with that. So it, as the name suggests it is a long division method. Here we are given is Z divided by Z minus 1. So now we will start the division procedure. So for this term, first term that means you have to set over here Z. We will multiply it with 1. So this will give Z minus 1. Over here it is minus. This is minus minus plus. This Z Z will be cancelled out by giving over here 1. Now to adjust 1 using Z we have to multiply it with Z inverse. So as you can see Z inverse into Z will give 1. So over here 1 term is adjusted. Now next this one is multiplied with the Z inverse which will give minus Z inverse. Right? So we can say that over here the next term is 1 minus z inverse right so this will be minus this minus minus plus 1 1 will be cancelled out over here we'll have z minus 1 again the same procedure from this z we have to obtain z inverse so we will multiply over here with z is to minus 2 right so this term will be z inverse minus z is to minus 2 again minus here minus minus plus this z inverse z will be cancelled out. Over here we will get z s to minus 2. To obtain over here z s to minus 2, we have to multiply it with z s to minus 3 with this z to get z s to minus 2, right? So this 
is going to repeat until infinite of terms but you have to do this at least for four terms that means this division should be carried out for at least for four terms so as you can see over here we have obtained one two three and four terms okay so this will be going to like this so now for this we have to find x of n how we can find that so according to the definition of z transform which was x of z that is equals to summation of n equals to minus infinite to infinite x of n into z is to minus n this indicates what if the power is negative to that of this that means the term is positive so over here you can see that all the powers of z is negative that means this is the right hand side sequence with positive values this indicates z is to 0 so the first value is 1 then the second value is also 1 that means the multiplication of z inverse is constant 1 then again that is 1 1 likewise so this having the arrow at the first position because this indicates what z is to 0 term where the arrow will be given so this is the original sequence from the z transform all right let's say for example in some other case you have obtained the value over here 2 into z is to minus 2 3 into z is to minus 3 here 5 z is to minus 1 so this answer will be x of n that is equals to 1 pi 2 3 likewise okay so according to the constant multiplications given to you you will find the x of n all right this is the causal sequence case now let us see the next that is anti causal case this mods are less than a okay so the second case that means for anti causal sequence that means mod z less than a okay so consider the data given to you that is find the inverse z transform if x of z given to you is z upon z minus a for which z is less than a okay so this is the case given to you so as you can see over here it is less than a condition that means you are asked to find the anti causal sequence okay so in anti causal sequence what we are going to do is first of all we will take the most negative term on this part and we'll have to obtain the numerator part as one okay so what we will do is as you can see over here x of z is z upon z minus a in numerator you have z term but to get numerator as 1 we will divide it by the z term so here with dividing by z we will get 1 similarly we have to divide the denominator as well so we will get 1 minus a by z which is also called as 1 upon 1 minus a z inverse right so this is how we will find the division for this now for the anti causal sequence the condition was what we need to have the most negative term on the left hand side so as you can see in the denominator this is the most negative term because here it is z raised to 0 right so what we will do is we will have x of z that is equals to 1 upon minus a z inverse plus 1 okay so we are going to obtain it like this so let's start the division So we have 1 divided by minus az inverse plus 1. So first of all we need to obtain over here 1 and we have first term over here is minus az inverse. So we will have to multiply it with plus a inverse z to make this term 1 because if you are going to multiply this minus az inverse with plus a inverse z this inverse term will be cancelled out by giving the final output as 1 okay so here with this we are getting 1 and now this term will be multiplied with this which will give plus a inverse z 
So here this is minus, this minus 1 minus 1, 0, that will be cancelled out and we will get over here minus A inverse Z. Okay. Similarly, we have to repeat for the next term. So from this minus AZ inverse to get minus A inverse Z, we need to multiply it with minus, sorry, plus A raised to minus 2 Z square. Why? Because by multiplying with this term, we will get over here A inverse with minus sign and this 2 minus 1 will give the Z power 1. Okay. So, this will give minus A inverse Z with the term multiplication second that is plus a raised to minus 2z square. Here minus minus plus. This will be minus. This will be cancelled out by giving minus a raised to minus 2z square. Okay. Now again repeat the same procedure. Now we have to multiply it with a raised to minus 3z cube to adjust the term over here. Minus a raised to minus 2z square. Okay. So as you can see if you multiply this with a minus a z inverse, we will get minus a raised to minus 2 z square. This minus minus plus and here we will get the term a raised to minus 3 z cube. This is minus by giving the term minus a raised to minus 3 z cube. So again we have to adjust it with a raised to minus 4 z cube. Okay. This will go up to infinite number of terms. So, as we have discussed, we are going to obtain this for the four terms only. So, now we have obtained 1, 2, 3 and 4 to the 4 terms. So, we are stopping over here by writing the final term which we have got over here. Okay. So, this is again infinite terms. Right. So, for this, if I want to write the answer that is x of n, how the sequence will be written over here? So, again we are going to consider the definition of Z-transform which says that if we have positive part in x of n, then the Z power should be negative. And if the power of Z is positive, which means that this should be the negative. So, over here you can see that all the power of Z over here are positive. That means this indicates that this all sequence are left hand side sequences, right? And over here, z raised to 0 term is not there. So, we are going to take it as 0. Then, z raised to 1. That means the constant value for that is a inverse. Then, for z raised to 2, the value is a raised to minus 2. Then, a raised to minus 3. Then, a raised to minus 4. Likewise, that will be on the left hand side sequences, right? having the arrow at the z raised to 0 position. So, this is the x of n for the anti-causal sequence. Okay. So, now I think the difference between the causal and anti-causal case for the power series method or long division method is clear to you now. So, as you can see for the causal sequence, the sequence was right hand side. So, over here the sequence starting from this position are going from the right hand side onwards that means for the positive side and in anti-causal side we have got the final sequence on the left hand side part that means on the negative side okay so this is the power series method or long division method to find the inverse side transform okay in exam whichever the method is mentioned to you to find the inverse Z transform According to that, you have to perform the steps and to find the inverse Z transform. So, the first method, partial fraction method is most important in between these two methods. So, make the practice of these examples and I hope this is clear to you now. These are the references. Thank you. Thank you for listening.